All right, welcome back to Chapter 3, Section 2. This is Day 3 of that section. And we're going to be looking at standard deviation of the residuals. Well, to assess how well the line fits all the data, we need to consider the residuals for each observation, not just one. So using the residuals, we can estimate the typical prediction error, or the average prediction error, when using the least squares regression line. And uh, if we use a least squares regression line to predict the values of a response variable y from an explanatory variable x, the standard deviation of the residuals given by this pretty formula right here. Uh, and that value gives the approximate size of a typical prediction error. So this s value, when we look at data outputs, we'll look for that s value. That's the standard deviation of the residuals. The standard deviation of the residuals is that s. And again, what that's telling us is the approximate size of a typical prediction error, or the typical amount, the typical distance uh, of a prediction error. We're also going to look at what's called the coefficient of determination. Okay? It's related to the correlation coefficient, r value. So we, when we have the standard deviation of the residuals, that, that gives us a numerical estimate of the average size of our prediction errors. The standard deviation of the residuals gives us a numerical estimate of the average size of our prediction errors. There's another numerical quantity that tells us how well the least squares regression line predicts the values of the y. So this first part right here is really describing the s. This other part right here that tells us how well it fits is what we'll call our r squared. And what is that? Well, the r squared is what's called our coefficient of determination. And previously we had calculated the correlation coefficient, that r value, if you remember that from uh, previously. Uh, the r value has to be between negative 1, uh, oops, it should be between uh, negative 1 and 1. Well, the r squared value is really just the square of that. So again, if we square a negative number, it's going to be positive. So really what's going to happen here is our r squared value will always be a number between uh, 0 and 1. So uh, it'll be a, a, a proportion, or you can even look at that as a percent. Uh, so we won't worry too much about the formula in terms of the calculation for that because uh, we'll have our calculator calculate our r and r squared values for us. We just got to learn how to interpret that. And what that r squared value tells us is how much better the least squares regression line, that's what LSRL means, the least squares regression line does at predicting values of y than simply just guessing the mean y for each value in the data set. So um, I like to think of it as a uh, the percent of the, of the data uh, that follows the regression line quite well. So here's an example. In section 3.1 uh, we looked at the relationship between the average number of points scored per game down here, the average number of points scored per game and the number of wins. And there certainly was a correlation. There simply looks like there was a strong positive linear correlation which makes sense. The more points per game you score, the more, the more wins you should probably have. And uh, if we do the least squares regression line, that equation comes out to be y hat. Remember that's y hat uh, is that following equation. That's what that green line is right there. If we look at the residual plot of this data, uh, what we're kind of looking at is these are the different residuals, the different residual amounts. And again, now what that s value means is it's that average distance. It's that average, or you can even call it the typical distance uh, each uh, observation is from the prediction line, that is from this line. I right, can even look at it back here, like this is the average distance, this is yet that distance, that residual. We found that av the average distance of all these residuals, uh, that'd be uh, our s value. The r squared value, uh, 0.88, uh, really talks about like 88 percent of these dots uh, uh, are explained are explained by the regression line or I like to also think of follow that regression line or uh, 
are accounted for by that regression line. So here, let's go through this example. We're going to calculate and interpret the residual of South Carolina, which scored 30.1 points per game and had 11 wins. So if we go back, what we're going to do is we're going to use this regression equation to predict. Uh, and we can see that, you know, if they were talking about if they had, the Carolina scored 30.1 points per game, scored about 30.1 points per game. Uh, if you look to the line, it'd probably expect about maybe eight, nine wins. It uh, looks like they had 10. So let's just look at this. The predicted amount of wins for South Carolina by putting that number into the formula, into that regression equation, taking that 30.1, that's what their um, uh, their average was. They scored 30.1 points per game, put on the formula, and the formula predicts they should have 9.40 wins. Well, they had 11 wins. So uh, the residual is, again, taking that observed value, that 11, this is the observed value, minus the predicted value. And there's our residual. Now the question is, what does that mean? Well, South Carolina won 1.60 more games than expected based on the number of points they scored per game by using that regression equation. Now, is a linear model appropriate for these data? Well, we look at that residual plot. And I'm looking to see if there's no obvious pattern. I certainly don't see an obvious pattern in the problem, so um, I would assume and, and say state that linear model is appropriate for this data because there's no obvious pattern. We're going to interpret the value of S. Remember now S is that typical distance uh, from the uh, regression line or that average distance from the regression line. Uh, I would simply say when using the least squared regression line with X equaling the points per game to predict and Y equals the number of wins, we'll typically be off by about 1.24 wins. And then that R squared value, again, talks about the uh, percentage of the, of the points that follow or are accounted by the regression line. And we could say about 88% of the variation in wins is accounted for by the linear model relating wins to points per game. Or like I like to say, is simply about 88% of the dots of the on, on the scatter plot follow the linear model well. Okay, well at this point then should be able to do the third assignment in section uh, 3.2, and that would be uh, this assignment right here. There was 48, 50, 55, and 58. All right, until the next video, good skill.